Solomon in Washington thinks that oh, abortion good. should be illegal because it would be taking a life from another person. Okay, before before we hear your story, Solomon, I'm curious how you define like life and person. Like, what is life to you, and what is person to you? How do you use those words? I I guess fundamentally that's the real question here. <laughs> yeah. So. It depends on when we define life. So I think if they're defining life, and some people define it differently than I do. Um, for me, I define it at a heartbeat. That happens relatively early on and pretty quickly after the realization of, oh, I've missed my period. Mm -hmm. um, so I think pretty much around that time would be a fair time to say that that would be life. In my opinion, I could be completely wrong. Other people believe other things. So it's actually but not really a heartbeat, though, when it's still in that early phase. It's a, that's an electrical impulse that registers similar to a heartbeat, but you actually don't have a circulatory system like shortly after okay. you're impregnated. What the, the thing that's registering on um, ultrasounds as a heartbeat is actually actually a, an electrical mm -hmm. impulse. The circulatory system, as people understand it, okay. doesn't quite so, exist. So that's just a valid correction. If, but if that is, but it's a valid, valid and important one to note if that is your definition of when life starts is when, uh, it's not mine for the record, but okay. if that is yours, um, you're placing it at the wrong time during fetal development. So just heads up there. Sorry, didn't mean okay. to interrupt so you, but I thought that was important even, to even with, that, even with that impulse. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. So even with the impulse or, or the electrical pulse, I, I think it would still stand because um, afterwards, unless there is something to alter that, it's still going to become a human life. Like the, the so, course of, it happening prior doesn't really change. Like it's, it wouldn't be no different than a person that has um, a hard birth and they could potentially die, but then you have doctors who saved the life and then it's still alive. You know, you wouldn't kill the baby afterwards or you, you know, it, okay. I, that's what I'm trying to say. So, so I'm curious before we get, before we get too deep into this, is, is this belief um, based on a God belief, is this because it, you think this is what a God wants or is this actually a separate belief for you? Uh, it's no, it's completely separate. It's not related to theism at all, but I mean, okay. I can talk about theism. I have no problem with that. Well, I'm, the reason is because if, if it is, then we should, we should definitely talk about that instead. But if it's separate, then it's, it's own legitimate issue. Um, so, so whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm down to talk about theism as well. Either is fine with me. Well, we've already started on abortion, so we can we can go with that. Um, so you no. think that the life starts when there are there is a beat of some sort, whether it's a heartbeat or an impulse or whatever. Um, you yeah. think that that is when life starts, and that is when it becomes a person, correct? Like by person, you mean somebody with like a personhood. Yeah, like what would be the difference between a baby, like a four-month-old baby, and a fetus, essentially? Well, I would say that the four-month-old baby they has both been have born. To have things that require it. I'm sorry. I, I would say that the four-month-old baby has been born. I would add to that that also a four-month-old baby has the ability, prefrontal cortical development, required to have cognition and self-awareness has also been born and is self-aware. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, uh, is no longer dependent on uh, another human being's body um, to exist and is, is fundamentally capable of living independently, which is a notable difference okay. when we're talking about but, the case. Well, well, so the yeah. fact is that, that so, yeah, so I, I you, hold on real quick before you move on. So you think that it should be wrong, um, that or that it is wrong. And, and I can understand that. But but you also can understand, I think you said earlier, how other people can disagree with you, correct? Yes, but to address that, I have to say uh, about the four-month-old baby. Okay. Right, so the idea that a four-month-old baby is going to survive on its own is not true. Uh, it needs people in order for it to survive. Mm -hmm. It's still when I say survive on its own, I mean survive right? without needing to be scale. physically attached. No, 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 one sec, because this is a conflation that I hear all the time, that, you know, once you have a baby, the baby requires okay. attention and care. Like, it can't feed itself, obviously, duh, right? Once you've had the baby and you've committed yeah. yourself to taking care of the baby, that you'd be negligent to not to, right? Like, once you give birth. I agree with that. But the differentiation that we're talking about here, 
Like the way I let me let me start by clarifying the way that I view abortion. I view abortion as me relinquishing the right to my body to even if you're I'll grant you, I will 100% grant you for the sake of argument, just for the sake of argument, let's say that the moment of conception, like the moment that sperm hits egg, zygote forms, we'll just call that life. We'll call that human life and just for the sake of definition throughout the entirety of this conversation, I will grant you that as a premise. Now, at what point does okay. that life have have rights that supersede my right to my own body is the question here, right? That's the important question. So oh, once okay. a four month old baby is out, a four month old baby no longer needs to be physically attached to another human and utilize their mm -hmm. body's resources. And this is, this would be illustrated by this argument. This is a counter to your point. Once I get the moment I give birth to a baby, mm -hmm. let's say that baby needs a blood transfusion. That baby needs a blood transfusion. I'm the only one around who can give that baby a blood transfusion. And I am that baby's mother and just gave birth to it. Should I be forced to give that baby a blood transfusion to keep it alive? It has been alive for one second outside of my body. Do I have to give it a blood transfusion? Should I be forced to do that? Answer that question for me, please. I think that's a, I think that's an unfair question to ask because it's not Why? necessarily directly related. Like it, the, the that actions that, related. So, that baby will. No, 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 no. It is. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you wash over the question because it absolutely is directly related because your argument is that I need to use my body to provide the requirements of life for that baby. Now you're saying that when that baby is in my room, I am required to provide my body for that. But once the baby leaves my room, I am no longer required, which means that you have a double standard when you're looking at this. You're saying when the baby is inside no, no. of me, well, well, I am. Let me back. Well, we have to step back a little bit to be able to address that. Okay, okay go ahead. So the baby has no has no has no ability to determine what it's doing in its life, right? I mean, it's not at fault here. It's not the one who chose to live. It's the person who decided to have a had relations and then they decided to have a baby. That's their when you get into a car, you consent to a car accident if you get in it. It's not the same. It's not the same. You you can't okay. use that as an argument. You can't say just because there is a possibility that engaging in sexual activity will result in a pregnancy that you are that that you consent to that pregnancy that you consent to your body being used in that way any more than you can say that there's a realistic understanding that if you get into a car there's going to be an accident that you consent to having an accident. Yeah, but the person who is the victim of the accident isn't responsible for being there. If I'm the victim the of some of getting gone. pregnant, it's a, what about a rape then? Like the more you keep justifying why these analogies don't don't okay, track, so, so, or so, so or you're rape, actually raping raping your scenario. which ultimately does boil down to bodily autonomy. It is my body, and if I do not want it to provide it to someone, I do not have to, and there is no reason that I should be forced to. Even if I make the decision, like if I like uh, in, agree to do it. I, I, if even if I stabbed you, even if I stabbed you, I still am not forced to give you a blood transfusion, right? If I made the choice to do that to you, I am now responsible for that okay. happening to you. But you still in that scenario can't use my body to maintain your life. The only place that this argument seems to hold for people for whatever dissonant reason I don't understand is when it comes to a woman's body in pregnancy. Every other time, you don't have to relinquish a part of yourself. Your bodily autonomy takes precedence. But as soon as a pregnancy is involved, regardless of the stage of the pregnancy, all of that goes flying out the window because you're a mom now, you decided to have sex, and now that baby owns your body, and so do I, by the way, because I get to have a conversation with you telling you what you have to do based on my ideas and understanding about what your body is for. So you'll excuse me if I get a little bit heated when I have these conversations because I can make those decisions for myself.